Would you like to live your best life possible, regardless of your imperfections? Discover cutting-edge tools and inspiration to let go of your limitations and expand your life beyond what you've ever imagined. On Imperfect Brilliance, we help you tap into your unique gifts and talents, uncovering and letting your brilliance shine. Join certified facilitators and coaches Betsy McLaughlin and Kathy Williams to delve into different areas of your life, get unstuck, and create the life that is truly possible for you. These joyful ladies have changed their lives by utilizing the tools and techniques they share with you. What if your willingness to acknowledge your brilliance is the catalyst to creating a new reality? When you stop judging you, what else can you create in your life and in the world? Join Kathy and Betsy live every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern to create magical and joyous possibilities for an hour of laughs, questions, tips, and more. We are excited to contribute and play with you. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Welcome, everybody, to Imperfect Brilliance Radio Show. We're delighted you're here today, and we're going to have a fun conversation about class creation. This was actually given to us by someone, a listener on Facebook. She messaged and said, I'd really like to hear about class creation and the ins and outs and how-tos and, and what suggestions you have. And this is something dear to my heart, so I'm excited that uh, she suggested it. And we are always, yeah, I love hearing from listeners about um, what they would like to hear about. It's just like, okay, uh, uh, that's a great idea. Let's use it. And, And please know that if you've suggested an idea and we haven't used it yet, it may just not have popped. Yet it may be in the works, so um, keep your ideas coming. Um, yeah, so Betsy, Absolutely. would you like to Absolutely. talk a little bit? You want to talk a little bit about us? Sure. Who are we? So, who are we today, and what grand and glorious adventures can we have? Um, that's one of my favorite questions to ask. Just. Um, you know, and, and the, who are we? That's always changing, isn't it? Like we could be, we could be happy. We could be, um, you know, in any 10 seconds or any increment of our day, we could be a mom, um, a facilitator, a grumpy pants, a happy pants. <laughs> like, you know, it's always changing um, for One of the things that, one of the many things that we do, we are both certified facilitators with Access Consciousness, and we facilitate people to know that how amazing they are and to know that they know what works for them. Um, And we, we teach classes in person as well as online around, and we have clients literally around the world. Um, we're both honored to be best-selling authors. Kathy's also she also published a book um, that is Relationships Done Easy, which I was honored to play with. And well, gosh, we do all kinds of stuff. We're both moms. Uh, we both live in the United States, although about as far apart from each other as you can be. I'm on the east coast of the United States. And Kathy is in the island of Maui in Hawaii. Um, and what else would you like to add to that, Kathy? Oh, geez, I think that was pretty comprehensive. <laughs> yeah. We have classes online as well as in person. So we would love to you to join us. So play with us online, as, you know, from wherever you are. I'm teaching mm-hmm. a class right now. I just love the internet. It's so amazing, isn't it? I mean, you can oh, yeah. be connected with the people. Um, I'm teaching radical abundance online uh, over the course of, from last month um, through the end of, well, through the beginning of December. And there are participants from South Africa and Australia and and different parts of Europe and Canada and the U.S. And it's just 
so much fun to be like, wow, you know, two decades ago, we would not have envisioned like people can just get together at the click of a button and see each other even. It's truly amazing. So Uh how does it get any better? And, you know, I mean, to that end, today we can talk about both in-person classes and online classes and getting not only your ideas together, but also people in the room, and um, whether that's the physical room or the Zoom room and the wonders of Zoom. I, I mean, there are so many online platforms for classes right now uh, for webinars and things, and Zoom is just one of those, which is actually a really fantastic, easy way. So it's zoom.us. Um, pretty fun way to way to be able to see people, and then they have access from the phone, too. So, um, all right, where to begin, Betsy? Gosh, I know. So that's a great question, Kathy, and I would say, you know, I, for a long time, didn't do anything because I got in my head and I was like, I don't know what to do. And if I don't do it right and if I don't do it perfect um, and then I mess up, oh, my gosh, and blah, 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 blah. And I was (laughs) totally, right, totally head tripping. So I didn't do anything. So the great, the question that you just asked where to start is just start. (laughs) Love it. Yeah, it's so true. And, and you know, let's, one of the things that I love to just dance with is what if an idea that would like to be created is not about you? Okay. What? Because we get in our head, we think, we think, oh gosh, I've got to figure out all the details. And like, what if no one shows up and, And all of this different stuff, right? When we're in our head, Mm -hmm. we can come up with a lot of things to be in our heads about. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and among those thoughts, you know, like, well, I've never done it before. Well, yes, of course you've never done it before, right? But, like, if you haven't started, get started. And, and, you know, that is one of those things that that I heard – Um, Stephen Bowman talking about last week, he said, the how is just get started, right? The how is just get started. You have the idea for a reason. And and I know a lot of people say, well, there's not a reason. But, But you have the idea because it would like to be created. And you get to ask, like, well, is this for me to create? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's for someone else to create. But if Uh you get the sense it's for you to create, then that's when question time starts. You know, okay, when, where uh, are two of the the simplest questions, right? Who's looking for this is also a great question. Because, you know, when we're coming up with a class, Like, when is such a great question because it could be, oh, wait, this is a class for January. Okay, is now the time to get working on it? Or is it for me to start working on later? Um, And if it's an in-person class, if let's say it's a five-day class, then I would probably want to at least get started in the beginning of November. Right? Whereas if it's If it's an online one-time class, I might not so much, Mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, um, but not to come to a conclusion about it, just like is now the time to start playing with it? And if not, when? Yes. Yes. And, you know, be willing to ask a lot of questions um, and to see, you know, what, the energy is. So if you are like most people who have a bunch of ideas uh, swirling around and you've got this idea and that idea and this idea all for classes or introduction, um, seminars, or, uh, you know, a manual, all the different ideas that you have. And are you willing to play with all of them? 
<laughs> so, and what I mean by that is really being, you know, staying in the question, which we talk a lot about on our show, where you could, there's, you can have 10 ideas, 15 ideas, 20 ideas, and ask each one of them which one would like to have some attention paid to it. And it could be that, okay, you're writing you're writing a manual that goes with something, and you may not even know what it's for yet, but you get the hit to write a little bit. Well, then go ahead and write. And then when you get – and it may just be two sentences, and then it's like, okay, that's done for now. And then it may be, all right, I'm going to contribute to this. And really be willing to follow the energy of what is asking to be get some of your attention. And so everywhere that you, you know, you may have always been, well, you have to have A through Z done before you can move on to your next project. How much is that limiting what you can create? Oh, I love that. Thank you for bringing that in. You know, even in terms of like when we're reading books. Uh, how mm-hmm. often do we feel like, well, I have to complete this book before I move on to the next <laughs> one? Or, or I've heard people you know, maybe say that, you yep. don't have that. Odd, maybe you don't have that attitude. But how many of us make ourselves wrong for not having finished a particular book? Like, oh, geez, I yep. never finished that one. When we're overlooking the fact that maybe we actually got all the information we required from that book. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not that – maybe there's not really that much more for us in that book. Mm-hmm. And so we're following our awareness and we've moved on. But our judgment is, geez, I don't finish things. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, and so and everywhere you like... judge that. <laughs> Go ahead. And, and I'm, I'd just like to clear this because in regard to classes even – what if you've started to create a class and then didn't follow through and finish it? Like, what if even that gave you information? So you don't have to mm-hmm. judge yourself for not finishing anything. Yep. So yep. all the ways you judge you for not finishing or, quote, following through, will you destroy and uncreate that time, Sagatillion? Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. All right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Can you talk a little bit about the clearing statement? Absolutely. So those words that Kathy just said are the access consciousness clearing statement. And it basically is designed to clear out stuck energies. And you can get way more information on it at theclearingstatement.com. Um, and mm. so we we use that so much, and it really does shift energies for us. So when you're when you can be aware of something that's maybe a little sticky or a little stuck or something, you can say those words and see what happens and and play with it. And I love that you brought in, you know, don't judge yourself. Uh, I have a lot of works in progress. I have classes at all different stages. Uh, and I I ask, you know, what would like my attention? Is this for now or is this for the future? I have come to realize, Kathy, that I am very aware of the future. So I will, you know, start creating a class and then it's like, oh, it's not it's not the time. But I have the idea and I start planting the seeds and then I just come back. Now I know I write it down and I start creating it. And then from there, I just keep asking questions. Is it now? Is it later? Is it? And just tell me. And I ask the creation to tell me. I love that. And what I love about that, yeah, what I love, love, love about asking the creation to talk to me is that gets me out of feeling like I have to control it all. And and that's kind of like I said. It's what if it weren't about you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like and and when I mean, if you're like me at all, you're a little bit have had the tendency to be self-critical or perfectionistic or whatnot. 
Okay, that was just my past. <laughs> and and so making it about like the project and who it's for rather than about me and me getting it right or perfect mm -hmm. takes the pressure off. It's a huge shift in perspective that you know, I, I started to adopt when I was writing um, for a published book and realized, wait, if it's not about me, I don't have to edit this for 30 more weeks or 30 more years, yeah. you know, just get it out there into the world. Uh, and I asked the piece, are you ready? And it said, yeah. So I was like, cool. Okay. I don't need to keep going with making it even more refined. So yes. um, I love yeah. that you brought in that you have a lot of projects where it's going at once and that you write them down. And I do as well. I, I write them in on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I have a running list of classes to create. And that might actually be the title of my note that I have to myself. So I'll go in there when I'm ready to add something and just be like, oh, okay, which of these, is it one of these that would like to be created now? And if one pops out at me or several do, then then I might get a fresh piece, piece of paper and just kind of jot down all of my ideas that that come in. And I'll ask, when would you like to be? So, for example, at the end of November, I have a class about food and eating. And this is a class I actually developed and, not, well, developed or came up with um, last month when I was doing a, um, an online five days of energetic exercises for loving your body. And we, we touched on food in that. And then that led to this other food class idea. So, you know, things lead to each other. And this will be a conversation we'll just continue in a couple of minutes on Imperfect Billions radio show. Thanks so much, everybody, for listening. We'll be right back. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hi, this is New Age Grammy winner Paul Avgerinos. Thanks for listening to Ohm Times Radio, and please support my peaceful healing music with a purchase at iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you shop for fine music. Just put my name into the search engine. Paul Avgerinos. A, V like Victor, G like George, E, R, I, N, O, S. You can also visit me at roundskymusic.com. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you the brightest of blessings. Dad, this is fun. I didn't think I liked kayaking. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I think it's time to head back in. Okay. Can we come back? Sure. Hey, be careful getting out of the boat. It's a kayak, Dad. <laughs> I'm going to return the kayak. 
Can we walk home? How about a taxi? It's a short fare from your neighborhood to your naturehood. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a neighborhood park or green space near you. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the U.S. Forest Service. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> imperfect <laughs> brilliance. Well, we are definitely imperfectly brilliant. <laughs> well, right before the break, Kathy, you were talking about, you know, playing with the, whoa, there's a interesting noise coming through. Um, so we were talking about playing with the energies of, classes and writing them down and asking when they would like to be. And was there any thought that you wanted to finish before we move on? Yeah. So when a class would like to happen, you know, I'll ask, how long would you like to be? For example, my food class that is upcoming, um, creating harmony with food, I would say, okay, you know, one one Zoom, no, that doesn't, that feels off. Two Zooms, you know, that, that seems about right. Okay, how long would you like to be? And I could even ask three Zooms, no, that doesn't feel. Um, so two Zooms, and would you, uh, would they each like to be one hour? Would they each like to be 75 minutes? You know, so continuing to ask questions until you kind of get the, what, feels light or right for you and then choosing the dates like I love to sit in front a front of a calendar and just look at it in regard to the class and say okay when would the class like to be and let it pop right oh the 20th of November stands out okay what time on that day all right, 10 a.m. Hawaii time, which would be, you know, 12 Pacific. So just asking questions and allowing myself to have the awareness of what's going to create the greatest possibilities. And when I override my awareness, when I say like, <laughs> oh, no, that's too long, or oh, I think it should really be four Zooms, or oh, it doesn't flow as well. It becomes a little bit sludgy. <laughs> So um, I've really learned to follow what feels right. And and um, how about you? Do you have anything to add to that, Betsy? Yes, absolutely. So when we do override what we are, we are aware of, don't beat yourself up over that. And how can you use that as, something that you can build upon. As I certainly, I know, and we all have, we've overridden what we knew. And then it was like, oh, gosh, I knew that. Well, the great question is, what is right about this that I'm not getting? And so that gets you out of the spot of beating yourself up. And you could be beating yourself up that you didn't do a class that you, you know, that you knew would have created more and for whatever reason you didn't create it, well, you'd be willing to not beat yourself up over that as well. Um, and, you know, I'm just wondering, like, everywhere that you have judged yourself for not doing a class, not creating a class, or creating a class, uh, or anything in between, and everywhere you've judged yourself, would you be willing to stop that? <laughs> No, I love it so much. I want to do it for 60 more years. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, and, and, you know, would you be willing to destroy and uncreate everywhere that you've judged yourself into doing nothing? Um, so everything that is, will you destroy and create it? Yes. Right. Time is a godzillion. All nine shorts, boys. Yeah. Right, so we can judge ourselves into doing absolutely nothing. And then, of course, we judge ourselves that we didn't do anything. So, you know, would you be willing to cut yourself a, a break? And wherever you are now is exactly where, you know, you're supposed to be. And what if every moment is a, is a new opportunity to create something new and something that you know of, about that no one else does? And um, one of the things that I wanted to bring into the conversation is, 
have you ever stopped yourself from creating something with, uh, and this has happened to me, so I certainly know this firsthand, I will have an idea and I write it down and I get excited and I start creating it and then I see someone else has created something similar. So I'm I go, so glad oh, you brought that in. Oh, yeah. Oh, and then I stop myself. And I'm like, oh, no, someone else is doing it, so I'm not going to do it. I've done that a lot. <laughs> so what, yes. what would you and, and Have you ever done that, Kathy? I used to do that all the time. I'm so glad you mm-hmm. brought that piece in because that was something I really wanted to touch on, where I'd be mm-hmm. like, oh, I'd really like to do something on... Um, or I'd really like to do an energy pull series on money or I'd really, which actually I'm going to have, um, in early December or I, or I'd like to do this. I had the idea about, um, trying, you know, not having to be perfect, but so-and-so is doing that. That means, you know, they're going to think I copied or whatever. And it's just yeah. like, no, <laughs> What if that that person is doing it means, well, there's an an interest in it. There's a market for it. If someone else is doing it, it doesn't mean don't do it. Yeah. And even if, the, you know, are you willing to even, goodness gracious, if somebody else, the, uh, the, let's say Kathy creates something and then I create something very similar uh, am I willing to have Kathy you know, judge me or be angry with me that I've created something similar? You know, and am I willing to have her think I'm copying her? And so there's been many times where I've gone to that space, so I haven't created anything. And oh, other, yes. Right? Right. So then, of course, that whole judgment piece that I just talked about, oh, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I've done that a lot. And then what about the other thing to ask questions about? So there's how many millions of people in this world? <laughs> you know? And what if we talked about the exact same subject and we had the same exact people in the class and it was two different classes? Would it we, would be. I mean, would we have some things that were similar, and would we have some things that were different? You know, and what would be a contribution to the people who are interested in it? So when you mm-hmm. when you start playing with that, and you play with those energies and those questions, the people that are interested are going to choose that class or that creation for whatever it is that they're interested in. Yes. And, you know, honestly, even if, let's say, Betsy and I were both teaching access bars, which is a um, hands-on modality of 32 uh, points on the head that help dissipate things that keep you stuck, thoughts, feelings, emotions, stuff like that. And, Let's say Betsy and I are both teaching that class and um, both on the same weekend, okay? Maybe the same day even and on the same block. Yes, we're teaching the same material, so to speak, from um, from the same manual. However, it's going to be a totally different class because Mm -hmm. some people will see my advertisements or my posts who won't see Betsy's, right? Like we're going to people who would like to learn from us or, you know, for, um, you know, who resonate with that particular class. So what if there really weren't competition? Mm -hmm. So everywhere you think that if someone else is doing the same thing, it's competition, will you destroy and uncreate that? Absolutely. Right and wrong. Good and bad. Right and bad. Pock on Wayne Shorts, boys. boys and beyond. And beyond. Yeah. Yes. And that, it, you know, like we it's could like even have. It's like we have so much capacity to create. And there are so many different 
different people and we each have our own essence. It's like mm -hmm. maybe you have a lot of Mexican restaurants in your town, but certain people will have a favorite and you'll have a different favorite from, you know, mm -hmm. someone else. It's just each one yeah. has its own flavor. So there's nothing wrong with having two of the same class on the same weekend. They're yeah. just two different things. Well, and I so, love it, you know, e and even if we um, had a class, yeah. can you hear me? Everywhere we make competition, whether can that's with me? a certain idea or a certain class, an issue, it actually detracts from what we have to offer. And it detracts from us creating. It actually distracts us from creating. Absolutely. Betsy, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm hoping you can, can hear, you me. hear me. Um, yeah, it's such, <laughs> such a Thank gift you. to be free from that need for competition. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so Kathy. that I think is one of those things where, you know, if someone is already doing a class, it's a non-issue. If no one else is doing a certain class, it's a non-issue. It's like, if you'd like to create it, create it. Um, yeah. It's such a gift to do that. It truly is. It, and I love Then the next it. one is, um, you know, being concerned about how many people are coming. That can be such a big one, too, where it's like, there's no need to be concerned about how many people are coming. I know I myself have limited myself from creating because I thought, well, I'm not sure anyone will be interested in that. And then when I realized, oh, it doesn't need to be that way. I don't need to do it because of how many people will come. Um, then I just freed myself to create. And I'll give an example of that. So I um, created the Radical Abundance free challenge. And the free challenge is, um, I can't hear Betsy, so it's interesting. <laughs> Like not hearing Betsy, I hope I'm not talking over you now. Um, so the Radical Abundance Free Challenge is a course that I yeah, do Betsy every once in a while, totally free, all about abundance and expanding our awareness of it. And one of the things that I, I became concerned about the first time I did the course was, will anyone show up? Like, I don't know if there's an interest in this. What if I put yeah, this whole thing together and the website together and, and the materials, I okay. get them all ready and nobody, nobody shows up. And, um, you know, I got over that point of view at one point just by realizing, hey, I'm not doing this for certain people. Yeah, I don't know. I'm actually doing this for me. I'm doing it for me view it opened me up to create without judgment and I um I ended up having two people I mean sorry not two 200 people show up and go through the radical abundance free challenge and it was just so juicy and yummy to hear different people's experiences of it as well but the thing is I got out of my own way by realizing that like whether two people or 200 show up, it's really about like me having fun and getting more information. It never, it didn't have to be about like, well, how many people are gonna come and are they gonna benefit from this? And I knew that if I would run the class, I would get more information. And that's true of any class. You know, if you haven't run a class, it's your first time, like just, do it. Just get started. And when you get started, you'll gain more information as you go. Little by little, little by little. 
and and more information comes in. So I'm going to ask Betsy, you know, what are your thoughts about this? And so can you, can you hear me, her, Kathy? So I'm going to dial back in. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody can hear me or not. Hello. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Kathy, for everything you shared. I really appreciate that. And it's so, so true. Like, where can you, where have you stopped yourself? And are you willing to just start? And no matter what, um, there's been classes that I've created, and I have been so excited and had the energy where it was going to be an amazing class, and then no one came. And so I used to go to what was wrong with me, what did I do wrong, and now I ask the question, is this creating for the future? And I really don't have a point of view anymore. If, if one person shows up or 25 people show up or 100 people show up, I'm so excited for the class, or even if no one shows up. It's what am I creating for now and for the future? And so with those questions, again, you get yourself out of judging that anything is wrong with, a, with whatever it is that you're creating. So, and that has been such a gift to me, such an amazing gift. So how many times are you creating for now as well as for the future? And what if every single thing that you do Every thought you have, every idea that comes in, every phone call you make, every email you send, every, every piece of paper that you touch is contributing to now and your future. Your business the way it is today, whether you're just starting or you've been in business for five years or 10 years or 20 years, what if every single thing you do is contributing? So when you have that as your life and your business, what would you like to create? Do you want to create from a space of joy and fun and the energy of what else you can truly create? So stick with us, you guys. We're so grateful. Sorry for the little glitch in uh, hearing <laughs> us, but we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Stay tuned. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living, a chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. Hi, this is recording artist and composer Yuval Ran inviting you to a voyage through the chakras, a new double album of guided meditations to transform your life, a sublime musical medicine for nourishing inner peace and reaching to your higher virtues. Get it now at metamindfulnessmusic.com. M E T T A mindfulnessmusic.com. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. This cat makes me make art. He's always motivating me to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. He's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Keyboard Cat, YouTube star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Start yours today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. 
Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Imperfect Brilliance, you guys. We're here with Betsy and Kathy, and we're having a lively discussion on class creation. And thank you so much for being with us and diving into this really interesting area. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to, to touch on was if you live in a remote area, Kathy, you know what? So people may not even know anything about what you do. So you could be, you know, um, let's say you're a therapist and you've just started your business and you don't know anybody in your area. So what could you create? Could you have like um, an introduction session? to you and your services, and could you do all of that online? So, you know, and what questions can you ask and how out of the box can you be with your ideas on how to find clients, how to create classes, how to create events that may not be like anything anyone else does? Yeah, what really popped into my head was a realtor I had. And she was incredibly creative in getting people, you know, to both buy and sell a house with her. Because she would bring little, like, buy things from Oriental Trading Post, which is an online or it has a catalog. It's like just little pencils or things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and she would get little ladybugs and and you know hook them to hook them to a postcard and and um you know that ladybug toy would stand out you know you'd be like oh and it would, might say something like i don't want to bug you but if you're interested in <laughs> selling your house <laughs> contact me and so you know the creativity kind of drew, drew people's attention and similarly, it's like when you do something that's different, mm -hmm. especially with tools like ours, if you're a listener to our radio show, you're probably a little unconventional, maybe just a tad. Mm -hmm. And so you're, you may also be looking for those people who want something or who are into something slightly unconventional. So what can you do and be to, to, be the invitation and to draw them in to what you have to offer. And yes, I have definitely, you know, there's a, a website online called meetup.com. It's a great place to be able to post events. You can even create a meetup group um, and it's free for under a certain number of members. So I have a couple of meetup groups on Maui and when I started doing this work, I thought, oh, geez, okay, I'm going to teach a bars class. It's so much fun, so maybe I'll do one like once a month. And I kind of found my groove really at one every other month because, you know, just to have people in the room. And I would post them on Meetup Group. I would also sometimes do an intro night or post an intro session on Meetup where maybe some of the other people who had learned bars would come and we'd all do a little demo on people who hadn't learned them. That way, the people who have learned them could practice and the new people mm -hmm. could get a little intro. Um, and so those are some of the ways that, that I've gotten interest also by doing something that's relatively low cost, maybe $20, $25, you know, mm -hmm. that can serve as a, hello, open the door to people so they begin to know you and trust you and willing to yeah. you know, spend a day with you or spend more money with you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and I, it, what popped in too is there's a lot of home-based businesses like oils or cooking, cookingware, 
And what's really neat is, you know, they'll have like a, a little demo night and you can come and you can play with the oils, learn a little bit about the oils. And then, you know, it's like a low pressure, you don't know obligation kind of thing. You can buy stuff if you want. You don't have to. The same thing with like a cookware demonstration or lots of things like that where it's just, it's a way to engage with people and meet them. And then, um, you know, so what other creative ways could you have for meeting people uh, and creating what works for you? That's a, such a fun question, and, you know, we encourage listeners to keep asking that. And it could involve, you know, people of other modalities. Mm-hmm. So, hey, we're going to do an evening of, of talking about sound healing, and then we'll do a little demo of access bars or something like that where it's like, mm-hmm. um, you know, you put the message out to – people you know, and they put the message out to people they know. I've also definitely seen it work well where someone will post on Facebook, like, what questions do you have about this particular topic? Let's say relationships. So what questions do you all have about relationships? And then people will put their questions down, and, and then you take that into consideration for a class. And then you say at the end of the post, you know, after you see everyone's questions, or you can message these people, you know, privately, hey, I saw you have the question about, you know, getting a partner. Well, I'm going to cover that in my class on Thursday or my class in two weeks. So um, please join us. It's at this place. So you Mm -hmm. already know that they have an interest in learning something, Mm -hmm. and you're just, you know, extending the invitation. And this is what I see a lot when people are first starting to teach classes that I see a lot of hesitation in like inviting people. And some of the most successful Mm -hmm. people I know really are um, pros at inviting people. And if you consider it like inviting to a party, it's kind of different than, you know, like, why would I not invite my friend? You know, um, but sometimes when it's a class, and especially if it involves money, people can get a little more hesitant because they're like, well, I don't know if I want to, you know, ask them. And it's like, well, they don't know about it unless you tell them about it. <laughs> yes. So and I'm really glad you brought that piece in, Kathy, because, you know, the, the the hesitation to invite your friends. And so the the energy of being the invitation versus being the hard sell. (laughs) Yeah. So, right. So when you are really that space of, hey, I would love for you to come and play, no obligation, no, you know, like come if you'd like. And, you know, to, to be that invitation, you don't have to tell them it's going to, you're not going to be a hard sell, but if you're just come play. I would love for you to come play and be that space versus, and I know everybody listening has had at least one or two people who have started a new endeavor and then they're like being hammered, like come to this presentation, come, come, come. And it's, it's such an energy of force that you're just kind of like, Oh God, no, please. You know, I remember going to one, one time and the people like, walked me up to the front row and I was like, Oh my God, I can't leave. And it was one of those very hard sell um, situations where I was so uncomfortable and I just, I knew I shouldn't have even gone, you know? So then I was like, Oh, thank you. My awareness was, and, and I overrode it cause I was trying to, you know, and, and so there was like this whole formula that these people were following. So nowhere in there was that an invitation to come play. And you know, right. so if you're right, if you're getting an invitation to come play, and you get that you have that there's no there's no expectation versus something different. Like, what would you like to be inviting your you know everybody that would enjoy coming? And it could be friends, family, people you don't know. And what if all of them 
had that same, you know, the same energy. So um, everything that this is bringing up for everyone, can we destroy and uncreate it? Yes. Right, right. Oh, thank you. Online, shorts, boys, and beyond. And, and you know, is, is there any more on this at the moment? There is something that just popped in that I'd love to talk about. Um, no, I think that was it. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, so when I teach classes with manuals, especially like when I was beginning to teach the bars class about five years ago, I remember being very concerned about having the right number of manuals and the right number of massage tables <laughs> and and really wanting to to absolutely know without a doubt how many people are actually coming to the class mm-hmm. you know and and over the course of having you know facilitated numerous numerous classes mm-hmm. and you know about 300 or you know 250 verse facilitators or whatnot like really come to the space in which now it doesn't matter that much okay if someone signs up for the class the day of they might not have a manual but i can get them a manual after right. the class right or maybe i'll use the manual that i'll and then i'll give it to them because that's you know i require one in order to facilitate the class but then i could give it you know then they could receive that one mm-hmm. um you know so and and similarly with the massage tables you know it used to be that i would i would be so concerned as i said and then i would have people start to ask me at like 8 a.m when the class was at nine can i join your class today and i'd be like okay yeah i i never said no and it always worked right. out i remember one time while everyone was watching the bars class video i ran over to my friend's house because I had called him, I said, I just got more people who signed up for the bars class this morning. Can I borrow your massage table today? And he said yes. So while they watched the video of of the bars, I ran over to his house, got the massage table, came back, and we set it up. You know, so it's like uh, things have a tendency to just come together. So would you be willing to be out mm-hmm. of control, like let go what? of the the control piece. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everywhere you feel like, no, I have to be in absolute control of my class. <laughs> otherwise, it's going to fall apart. What if it could fall together, right? Yeah. If you're out of control, would you be willing to let it fall together? And mm-hmm. everything, all of that brought up, uh, will you destroy and uncreate it all? Yes, right and wrong. Good right and bad, and puck. All nine shorts. All boys nine and shorts, boys and girls. <laughs> yeah. And Kathy, too, you know, in, in the willingness to be out of control, are you also willing to fall flat on your face? What I mean by that is, well, I don't do a book or that book, but what I mean by that is, you know, are you willing to teach a class where you've never done it before? Like my first bars class, and I too have taught a lot of classes. When I first did it, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was willing to do it. And I was willing to say, you know what? I don't know. Let me get back to you. I will find out and let me get back to you. And then it, I would follow up. And people are fine with that. You know, they, they're, and no one knows how nervous you are. They're not going to know if, it, if it's your first class. They're just not going to know these things. If you go in with a how much fun can I have and what can I contribute to people, no matter what it is you're doing and being willing to make a mistake, being willing to not have enough manuals, being willing to, you know, have you, you know, if you're recording the class and have the recorder not work or not having enough massage tables or whatever it is that you're doing, if you're willing for all of that to go on, what can you create then? Right. So when, and when you're unwilling to have it and you're trying to control every part of it, you start choking the life out of the creation before it even begins. So everywhere so true, that we have Betsy. choked the life out of it, can we destroy and create all that? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> right, Thank Roland, you. get that pop pop on the shorts boys and beyond. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the first time you do it, it it is like, uh oh, you know, and and I love that beautiful humility of being able to say, well, I don't know. Let me get back at, to you on that one. I'll ask. I'll I'll find mm-hmm. out for you. You mm-hmm. know, because also that there's that honesty. People start to trust you because yep. you haven't just made up an answer for them, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yep. well, I don't want to tell them I don't know, so let me tell them this. You know, no, they really trust you more if you say, well, I'm not sure about that. Let me get back to you on it. Um, mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. We have just oh my completed the whole <laughs> show. Well, if you guys have more questions about class creation, please send them to us on Facebook. We're Kathy Jones Williams on Facebook. And just eat, and um, Betsy McLaughlin on Facebook. And if we're not your friend, just you know, send us a message. Hey, I've been listening to your show and wanted to ask you this. That way we know you're not, you know, some um, some fake account or something. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all. Thank you so, so much. much. We much. appreciate you. <laughs> Have a great week. Have a, yes, and if you can't wait a whole week, you can find us on SoundCloud or subscribe on iTunes or listen.